everyone's favourite comedian Hannah Gadsby is clapping back using her Netflix connections to showcase queer comedy or trans comedy or gender inclusive comedy, something like that. They, them comedy. Now this might be really, really good. After all, Hannah did wow us with her multiple award winning special Nanette. I'm not a man hater, but I am afraid of men. If I'm the only woman in a room full of men, I am afraid. And if you think that's unusual, you're not speaking to the women in your life. <laughs> I don't hate men, but I wonder how a man would feel if they'd have lived my life. <laughs> I'm happy to keep an open mind. This could be really, 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 really funny. Let's have a closer look at what's in store for us right after this. Cold turkey is awesome on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break bad habits. I'm not talking about some sort of crystallated healing meditation that your weird auntie talks about. I'm talking about this video's sponsor, Fume. See, they approach a problem in a different way. Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your bad habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavoured air device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapour, Fume uses flavoured air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all-natural, delicious flavours. You get it. Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy, and it makes replacing your old habit easy. It fills the void in a natural, guilt-free way. Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial, and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidget giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing while breaking your habit. I wasn't sure what to expect from Fume. I've got some old habits I could do without, but it's actually very satisfying. The flavor's full and fresh. I like orange vanilla. It's well designed and crafted, perfectly balanced and fun to fidget with. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason you can't be one of them. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash bearing or scan the QR code and use code bearing to get 10% off. That's tryfum.com and use the code bearing to save an additional 10% off your order today. So as we know, Hannah Gadsby is the pinnacle of comedy, winning award after award for a groundbreaking special Nanette. Now, could she outdo herself with her new show, Gender Agenda? I don't know. Here's a trailer. <laughs> got a whole bunch of fabulous and diverse genderqueer performance and I am incredibly excited to bring this to you. The last time Netflix brought this many trans people together it was for a protest, so <laughs> progress. That's true, they were protesting Dave Chappelle for making jokes about trans people. They're a real easygoing bunch, you know. Can take a joke. Light-hearted sort of people. Not overly offended at all. My name is Jess Tom, I'm trans, can you tell? Don't answer that! a test. You're passing. Am I? Well, not really, no. Your name's Jess Tom. You're a petite Asian girl with a moustache. So if you were, like, originally a dude, I suppose, but if you were a chick, like, at birth, then no, you look like a chick with a moustache. Not that it matters. She can be a chick with a moustache. Moving on. There's something about being the only woman that walks into the space in a men's suit that makes those straighties think you're the most interesting person. Like, the women are coming up to you like, I had a sexual experience with a woman once. <laughs> Calm down, lesbians. Yeah, see, this is starting to look the way I thought it would. It's all gonna be, I'm gay and trans and gay and trans and trans and gay. I'm a lesbian. Or it's gonna be, I'm depressed. I've got anxiety. There's something wrong with my brain. I just have this feeling. I can't walk the dog while I'm drunk. It's too much. She starts barking at people. I start yelling at them too, like, who we met at. <laughs> But I don't want to say that anymore because it sounds so negative. From now on, I say my mind sparkles with imaginary danger. Called it. It's all going to be I'm super gay or I'm super depressed. Back when I was in school, kids used to call me a butt pirate. And that was kind of cute. I'm not mad at it. I'm really not. <laughs> Although I will admit, I do personally prefer Booty Bandit or Bum Burglar. All right, that was a bit funny at least. I might be pleasantly surprised. Sex work and performance art are very similar. Someone's always naked. <laughs> Someone's always thinking, when is this going to end? <laughs> We've all been there. The more that I read about the gay agenda online, the more alarmed I'm becoming at how much more confident straight people are and our ability as gay people to do anything. Self-deprecating humor, okay, fair enough, no worries. Our community evaporates the moment we have to post a group photo. <laughs> What does that mean? Is that a shit joke that doesn't make sense? Or is it a gay joke that's so gay that my straight brain doesn't understand it? Have I been gayed into confusion? I don't know, can someone explain this to me? 
March 5th, here we come. It's in my diary. Anyway, what's the media saying about gender agenda? Vem.us says, Seven genderqueer comedians are joining Hannah Gadsby for Netflix's Gender Agenda. Haha, <laughs> nice play on words. Gender agenda, this is going to be hilarious. The special will highlight comedians like Jess Tom, Alok, Asher Ward and others by Tom Factora. We've all heard of the gay agenda. Now get ready for the gender agenda. That's the title of Hannah Gadsby's forthcoming Netflix special in which they're rallying together some of the biggest genderqueer names in comedy. That includes Jess Tom, Alok, Asher Ward, Chloe Petz, Deanne Smith, Krishna Iza or Iza or Izda, and Mix Dahlia Bell. That's Mix as in MX, the weird pronoun, not M-I-X. All of whom performed together at London at the Alexandra Palace Theatre with Gadsby serving as host. Tom recently wrapped an off-Broadway run of their one-person show, Less Lonely, and served as a story editor on season two of Our Flag Means Death. Alok, or Alok, headlined the New York City Comedy Festival in 2021 and will also headline the Netflix Is A Joke Festival in May. Asher Ward joined Saturday Night Live as a writer last year and is the youngest writer in the show's history. And that's just three of the performers. In the two-minute long trailer for the special, Gadsby dryly jokes, the last time Netflix brought this many trans people together, it was for a protest. So progress. Well, I've got a feeling this is going to show them. And by them, I don't mean they. I mean them bigots. The Dave Chappelle's and the Ricky Gervaises. You know, the toxic, straight, heterosexual males. The ones that are ruining comedy with their funny jokes. Anyway, I have a prediction. And I could be wrong. But here's my prediction. As I said, these gender agenda comedians are going to have two gears. The first is going to be, so I'm trans. I'm totally gay. That's my identity. And I'm gay and trans and gay. The second is going to be more along the lines of, I'm depressed. I'm trans and gay and trans and queer and depressed. That's my prediction. But let's not leave it to mere speculation. Let's get ourselves a little taste ahead of time. I want the face of comedy to change. I want you to pull up Netflix comedy specials and it's all queer people of colour. Is that a joke? Is she being ironic or something? I want Netflix comedy to be all queer people of colour. I think it's a joke. Is it a joke? How are we feeling about Trump's America? Don't tell me if you feel good. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Okay, that's that's the only thing I needed to hear. That is fine. You're the only person who exists. I do think I am introducing new ideas to people who've maybe never heard them before. New ideas to people who've never heard them before. Why do you think of Trump's America? You're the only person in the room that matters to me. Ha 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 ha. That's not a new idea and that's not comedy. What the fuck, Jess Tom? And who probably weren't expecting to hear them at a comedy show. I don't know if you can tell from looking at me, but I am somebody who cares about Asian American representation in the media. <laughs> okay, great. That's... That's about how Hollywood feels right now. <laughs> like, kind of too long of a silence, and then people going, oh, right, clap, hey! I'm Asian too, guys. Something, something Hollywood, something, something queer, something trans, something Asian. God. I think it's not that subjects should be off limits but that people should think about what they're saying. Nothing should be off limits, but people should think about what they're saying. The fucking vocal fry gets me every time. How do you get that level of vocal fry? That sounds like Tibetan yodeling or whatever the fuck. Is it Tibetan yodeling? <laughs> There's a difference between somebody talking about their own experiences of sexual violence and doing jokes where sexual violence is the punchline. In the mainstream comedy landscape, there are a lot of jokes that are specifically degrading to trans women. Trans women, particularly trans women of color, black trans women, people murder them at an alarming rate. Like, if that's not a joke anymore, then maybe this won't happen as much in real life. Oh, God, this is depressing. And who's murdering all these trans people? Isn't self-deletion the problem? And why and how is this funny? If we stop joking about a thing, then it won't happen in real life as much. For fuck's sake, if we just reduce the amount of knock-knock jokes, I'd stop getting so many visitors. And how in the world do we end this epidemic of chickens crossing roads? You can't joke about this shit. <laughs> And that is the picture of comedy and the sound. Look at that. Mm. Funny as fuck. Do -do 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 -do. Oh, 
I'm like not working right now. I got so much free time. I'm like thinking a lot about my mental health. I don't know, I feel like every cultured woman has been to the psych ward like once. Mental health, I told you, mental health. I'm depressed, I'm trans, I'm depressed. I'm queer, depressed, depressed and queer and trans and queer and depressed. Fucking hell. What an opener at a comedy show. I don't know, maybe it's some people's bag. It's not mine though. I don't know, I feel like every cultured woman has been to the psych ward like once. <laughs> right, for like two weeks. Me, personally, I was admitted in the classical way, you know, like, against my will. This seems like a really fun night. I was going to say, this is worse than black comedy, but it's not. It's black trans, queer trans comedy or something. My name is Chloe Petz. I'm a very masculine woman. Uh, so everywhere I go, I get called sir. Look at me. I'm a lesbian. I'm a very masculine woman. And that's going to be my whole set. It's talking about how masculine and butch I am. Scissor me timbers, gov. All right, let's go. So uh, pre, pre-coronavirus, I went into a travel lodge. and went up to the hotel assistant and, and he was like, how can I help you, sir? And I was like, listen, mate, it's actually madam, but don't worry about it, it happens all the time. And he goes, oh, my God, I'm so sorry, sir. Ah, uh, OK, OK, misgendering joke's cool. I mean, did it happen? It probably didn't, but it's comedy, I guess. But I, so, so I have sort of haven't always been this masculine. I used to sort of try and assimilate into straight culture and pretend that I was one of the straights, uh, but I wasn't very good at it. So I remember when I was 15 years old, I was sat around uh, watching the telly with a bunch of my girlfriends, and they were going around the circle talking about all the boys that they fancy, right? And it goes around the circle and it gets to me, and they're like, oh, Chloe... Who do you think's hot? And I just panicked, looked at the telly and went, oh, um, I don't know, he's quite fit. Uh, that was Claire Balding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a bird. I'm a lesbian. I'm a lesbian and I'm a comedian and I'm a lesbian. Also, she just misgendered the person on the TV. That is her rum. But I think that was the joke. I don't know. Fuck. I can't tell. <laughs> liberal utopia. Do you want to know how I immigrated here? I got into Montreal in 2006 by gay marrying a Mexican. Oh my god, I'm a lesbian! And I'm not racist, I married a Mexican. Look at me, isn't my bow tie cute? In 2006, you couldn't even gay marry a Mexican to get into Mexico. <laughs> Do you understand how amazing this place is? Do you want to know why the Mexican came here? You're not even ready for this. The Mexican got into Montreal because she wanted to go to mime school. She wanted to go to mime school. Okay, that's odd and quirky, I guess. I mean, it's not hilarious, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a story, I suppose. So I was on a date with a girl the other day. I know. Everyone thinks I'm gay. That's because you are pretty gay. And I bet you're about to flaunt it. It was the jazz hands that gave it away. Even though you're wearing a football top or a hockey jersey or whatever the fuck, it was definitely the jazz hands and the voice. Everyone thinks I'm gay. To be clear, I'm not gay. I'm bi, bisexual, lucky me. Oh, I'm complex. I'm gay with a few extra steps. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> no, of course not. I mean, it's fine if that's who you are. Absolutely. I mean, I have many gay friends. My father's gay. It's just like, fuck, I don't fucking care. Do some comedy. And I was on a date with a girl, and turns out, right, she used to be a lesbian, which is great because... So did I. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, because of the genderqueer thing. You see what I mean? I pointed this out. It's all going to be, I'm gay and trans and gay and gay and trans and queer and queer and lesbian and gay and trans and queer. Or it's going to be, I'm depressed, I have anxiety. That's the only two gears for queer comedy. Just be a good comedian who happens to be a trans or a queer or whatever. <laughs> is Mix Dahlia Bell. I like to make sure we're all on the same page for what to expect from me. I am a transgender woman, not a very set drag queen. So, there will be no singing, no dancing, no death drops, none of that nonsense. Not tonight, but please do throw money at me the entire time. That is acceptable. <laughs> Like, if anyone wants to flirt with me after the show, I highly encourage it. Uh, and you have to get my pronouns right every single time, okay? Uh, but when my bill collectors call, they can use any 
any pronoun they want and I still won't pay them. So that's <laughs> just a little example of nuance. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Pronouns, I'm trans, trans pronouns, pronouns trans. I'm not gonna pay my bills. <laughs> cool. Well, if that's what we can expect, this should be a fucking ripper. I can't wait to see it. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And thank you to Fume for sponsoring this video. Link in the description. Ta-ta, goodbye. Recession!